Good morning. Saturday or good morning. Afternoon. Time for the weekend or, or afternoon. He yeah, says. depending on what oh, I get it done. I don't know if I'll get it edited. Uh, we're running. We're running. A, little a bit quick late. one today, you yep. know, because we don't like missing weekenders, but we're very, very short of time mm. because there's cheesy hot dogs waiting for us downstairs. So what? Now? We're gonna have a cheesy hot dog breakfast. Cheesy hot dog breakfast. Yeah. Okay. There's a 12-inch cheesy hot dog downstairs with your name on it, Justin. Uh, and it's not just. It's not just any old cheese. Hi, everybody. By the way. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is Stu, uh, and this is Justine. Hey. <laughs> It's not Again. just. It's not just any. It's, so it's you got your uh, oakwood smoked hot dog. Yeah. yeah bro, uh, is not, T, is not, TTN having a barbecue or something not, today? I wasn't told about. It's not mechanically reclaimed either. No. Uh, Apparently, it's and, proper meat. Yeah. And, yeah. It's also got chunks of oak smoked cheese. A so smoked cheese is all embedded uh, in it as are we, well. Are we kind of off topic here? I thought this was a no, war gaming show. Because there's that, and I believe there's some onions there as is. well. Yep. yep. So hand two onions at least. So. Hand food is okay. um, so stuff that you you know you got in your hand okay. um, is I think the cornerstone of any good game. Most gamers I know love um, to eat what beer and pizza, <laughs> beer yeah. and pretzels, yeah. diet coke, whatever you want to call it, yeah. um, Chinese takeout, whatever. It's less of a hand food the Chinese takeout, but, but yeah, uh, the Americans. He is the opposite of a vegetarian. Yeah, I'm a carnivore. So you will take the meat, but not the veg. Correct. I'm not even going near that. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a there's a 12 inch hot dog full of cheese, hot, sticky cheese, downstairs. I hope everyone else is laughing. You see, I'm, <laughs> I'm, are you not? Because you just very very briefly, we are I'm massively, yeah. hungry. I'm massively off topic. Yeah. But aren't you? Re I'm really really jealous of the Americans because the Americans with their Chinese food and that, mm. all of the different things they have. They've got the idea of portable food down to a T. Yes. Yeah. As close to portable as we get in the UK, what, the pasty? Do you know what I've... I, Which is very nice. This will bring me back. I think we, we discussed uh, Ghostbusters on a previous episode. Uh, we did. Two weekenders back, I believe. Yeah. Um, and this, this takes me right back to that conversation in so much as in Ghostbusters, the, the famous scene, this is the last of the petty cash. Where they're eaten out of... I love the way Chinese yep. is packaged yeah. in the Yeah, the, the little pots. Yeah, because over here we get these yeah. really cheap Fo and horrible foil. plastic yep. and foil trays. Yeah. Where it's the little elegant wooden pots. And I never, I've never mm. found them over here. Mm. So, uh, do you know what? Maybe that... Maybe, just maybe, I can get a supplier of the boxes. Buy a bunch of the boxes. Go out and buy Chinese food. And then just transfer it into the boxes. And have a proper Ghostbusters night eaten out of the boxes. And that might sound strange... But for me, the packaging is just as important as the content. Agreed. So, anyway, welcome to the weekend. We're going to talk about miniatures now. Sure. Much, um, like, much like miniatures. Sometimes the packaging is more important than what's <laughs> inside. What's yeah. inside? So, um, there's, a, there's a, a release has spilled out there that we won't be talking about it. So, just in case you think we've forgotten about it, no, we can't actually talk about it. Yeah. But there'll be more on that soon. Oh, you and me had to break out the admin hammers. Flames of War for the win, Vietnam week. It's been a good week. It's been fabulous. I've had, I've had the best, it's probably the best themed week I've ever, I've ever had the, the joy of participating in. Mm. I've loved the music, I've loved the movies, it's been, it's been fabulous. So just another big thank you, I know myself and Dave already thanked uh, community members for that, but just another big thank you to you guys for getting involved in that. Um, Justin's learned a lot about music um, and I've had to explain to him you know that Buffalo Springfield is crap it's a massively important song crap the lyric paranoia runs deep okay okay and I've forgotten the rest of it paranoia strikes deep into your life it will creep It starts when you're always afraid Step out of line, the man come and take you away We better stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going on Never stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going on Never stop now, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going on Never stop But it's really important. Oh my God. <laughs> Wisdom. 
<laughs> it's it's a song of our time. It's basically talking about you know paranoia runs deep. Um, if, it, it, if you're in fear all the time, that's creating that. Mm. And if you step out of line, the man's gonna come and get you. And you know who the man is. You know, in these times of um, the NSA watching us, GHCQ watching over us, and you can't send a text message or have a, f a phone call without it being recorded. Mm. In these days when the man is watching you mm. and every move you make, songs like that are important to make you remember what's important in life. Because it ain't the one that's listening in on your calls. It's about everybody else. I anyway, still don't like the song. We gave away a prize in yep. the last Weekender. And the Weekender winner was going to win the M13 <clears throat> with a box of crew. And you've watched, you've watched the unboxing of this now because it is absolutely superb. It's, it's a great little absolutely kit. Absolutely superb. Um, and yes, I, I did last night break out that I want to make sci-fi, 15 mil sci-fi army based on those. I think it'll be great. Myself and Dave, Dave hated the idea and then slowly came around to the idea. Mm. But basically what I'm thinking is using those, you could do a fantastic Starship Troopers type game in 15 mil, just using the rules already from Tour of Duty from Vietnam. Because the Starship Troopers get cool transports, mm -hmm. cool flyers. I was thinking the Batman, the new Batman flyer, I've seen it recently yeah. and it looks like kind of a 15 mil scale with a couple of cool tanks and stuff like that. And then the Vietnamese recycling rules are perfect for bugs because you're blowing up bugs by the template and then they just recycle back onto the board. Well, they did... Oh, going back a little while now. <coughs> they did action... Action? Fleet? Action? There was a set of models where basically... You got, it's almost like a micro-machine type thing. You've got really tiny little figures and you got um, these... Um, I think Galoob might have made it. You get these these models, or they're not the toys really, but you get these pre-painted models mm -hmm. of the dropships from Starship Troopers. So they would be about that kind of size. It'd be perfect, I think, then for 15 mil. They'd, they'd fit in perfectly. Yeah. And you also got some of the larger bugs, the bu tanker bugs and the plasma bug. So the tanker bug would be about, in fact, I've got one at home. The tanker bug would be about that long. Yeah. Which, if you get your trooper, would your trooper's going to be about that kind of size. Yep. That's going gonna... to... like that. I think the bigger the bug, the better. Yeah. yeah. So I reckon that would work really well. Oh, you'd want to repaint them because they're quite yeah. toyish. But there you go. So anyway, we'll see. Uh, you know, I'm going to be reading the comments today and see if anybody else is up for that. But uh, mm. I just think that doing something on that 15 <coughs> mil after seeing those right M113s. <laughs> uh, uh, still used they by the UN fabulous. today, if I'm not mistaken. I love them. What? Still used by the UN today, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Or something yeah. very well, the, similar. The, 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 uh, variations. There's variations mm. of that. It's just, it's just such a fabulous kit. Mm. It's so, so cool. I just want to build loads of them. Anyway, Fox 40, you are the winner. Congratulations. So, we'll come back to Vietnam in future episodes and things like that. But, you know, we've had our themed week. It's now to move on to other other things. Just, just like the real Vietnam, now you've experienced it, are you then going to just make loads of references to it for like the next 30 years and not be able to get past it? Correct. Knowing him and track. Every new member that joins Beasts of War from this day forward, we'll all be able to say, you don't know, man. You weren't there. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're just going to program that into the website just as the first message they receive? Up, I should set up the you don't know man, you weren't there group and just automatically subscribe all new members of Peace of War to that group <laughs> where we can all go, oh, you needed to be there. <laughs> so it's like the, the new Nidweek then, basically. Yes. It's like a, a seminal moment in the history of Peace of War. I think, I think this has been a bit like Nidweek. Nidweek was something very, very different. Yeah, this was a themed week, but it did. It felt different. It felt new to me, I, and I, I enjoyed it primarily because I love the game. I think the game's great. I really enjoyed uh, the Vietnam theme week you guys did. I wasn't actually a big fan of your need week. Yeah. Thought, thought you could have done better. And uh, Vietnam week, awesome. Very, very good. Very, very good. Well, remember, Vietnam week was the first attempt at any such thing. So. No, I think you mean Nidweek was the first attempt. Oh, sorry, Nidweek. See, I was just letting that slide. I wasn't going to uh, pick no, it up No, no, no. I, I don't want Thank the trolls you, to get them. Thank you, mate. Anyway, in this episode of The Weekend, I want to get a, a quick chat about board games. Because while all this has been going on, 
we started to get a wee bit of a vibe into board games again. I have a stack of board games that are um, that are about to go under the camera over the next, uh, hopefully, couple of weeks. And we're going to start getting a lot more board game stuff through. And it's just, it's just nice. I, I, ever since I started playing the stuff with Savannah, yeah. it's all started to kind of get the vibe of it again. Definitely. You've picked up a couple. Oh, God. Yeah, there's loads. There's, see, the problem we get is, and some people might be the same, but like, like a hobby magpie, where actually you see stuff, you think, oh, that's really cool. Oh, I need to own that. And so you get it. And then maybe if you're lucky, you actually play with it, but sometimes you don't, and it just actually it's owning it. I think we talked uh, previously about DVDs and things where you. There's something wrong with my mic. <laughs> I just love it. I just love it. Would you believe it that the studio manager, the the I the, I, the I, perceived I, head I, of studio, have I put this in back to front? Have a look at this microphone. Have a have look I at this microphone. Outside, it appears to be pointing inside your shirt. <laughs> Yes. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> yes. The reason I'm celebrating is because we get so much stick from him for wearing our mics the wrong way. And it's nice to see you're fallible. I'm human. <laughs> sort of. Well, as humans go. My apologies. No, 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 no. Oh, it's... Sorry for the crackling. Uh, uh, that's fine. So, uh, we we'll talked about board games, board games, board games. We talked about... See, I've lost my flow now. I've... Um, we talked about board games. Yes, so Hobby Magpie. So you'll see various bits and pieces, a bit like DVDs, where you'll you'll go, uh, oh, I haven't watched um, whatever the film is in ages. You'll go to take it off your shelf, and you realise it's still in the cellophane, because you've actually never watched it before. Yes. You just bought it. Yes, and, I have tons of them. Yeah, board games are the same. I've actually got board games and things at home, where I've opened it up and thought, oh, I haven't played this in ages. I open it up, and the counters are still actually on the card frame still. You're thinking... Oh, no, wait, I've never played this before. <laughs> I played somebody else's copy. I bought a copy because I really enjoyed it, and I've never done anything with it. Yeah. So, but anyway, so I've got a whole bunch of games that I'm, I'm slowly working my way through, um, and I've decided a, a mid-year resolution, my summer resolution, as I now approach, we've seen the lion's share of summer now, as we now approach autumn, mm -hmm. um, well, over here anyway, um, the, the plan is board games. Yeah. So I want to try and get some board gaming in, at least a board game done every couple of weeks, maybe play a, a board game every couple of weeks. I think that's, that's achievable. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Hopefully we can yeah. even get a Feast of Games or something recorded oh, as well. So. That, 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 that'd be great. I really enjoyed the Feast of Games we did. Mm -hmm. And there's some, funnily enough, every time I'm getting a new game, I'm sort of thinking, oh, that'd be great. That'd be great for that. I wonder what food we'd do with that or what drink we'd do with that. Uh, Mansions of Madness, it's like, oh, you could do that like a dinner party and you could have like... Uh, oh, tentacle soup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then what else? Calamari, it would have to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. You've got, um, so I say Mansions of Madness, getting into that in a big way. Again, so I got the game and I thought, oh, so I've got all the expansions Yeah, now. you had to, and, and you I, hadn't even played the game. Still not played the game yet. <laughs> but I'm doing looks the same great. thing with, with Battlestar Galactica at the yep. moment. I'm thinking... Oh, I really want to pick up a copy of Battlestar Galactica. And we do have the trilogy sitting there. Yeah, and then there's just two expansions sitting either side of it, and I'm going, mm -hmm. oh no. no I see there's, a, there's actually a Batman Arkham City game sitting as well that I'm yep. very tempted by. Yes. Because I'm thinking I can pick that up, then pick up the Night Models miniatures and use them to play it. Yep, could do that. Could do that. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, I've just picked up uh, the, my latest acquisition, this game called Fortune and Glory. Mm -hmm. um, which is oh, that kind of your pulp, kind of Indiana Jonesy style game. It's a big game, can play up to eight people can play in it. You get Nazis, you've got Zeppelins and things like that. You've got Mayan temples and things to explore. You've got gold, you know, mystical gold coins and other bits and pieces, treasure that you can find. The game comes with its own soundtrack on CD that you play, uh, that you which can play as really you play. Which is a really nice touch. It's a really I've great idea. I've seen a idea. couple of games in my time that come with a soundtrack. And uh, there was a even for Space Hulk, Beast mm -hmm. of War created a kind of like a soundtrack yep. track system. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm a big believer in if the, you can, the atmosphere if you can do it, anything that adds to fact, the atmosphere. Actually, I think spray the, scent. Hell, was there not an actual board game called Atmosphere? You played a DVD. Roll the dice. <laughs> May, yes. May, I can take you even further back. It was a VHS cassette. Oh thing. man. So it was, that's how long Atmosphere is out. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I remember um, playing a DVD version of it, which is just what twigged in my head. Mm. VHS version, perhaps slightly before my gaming uh, prime. The uh, yeah, there was a uh, it, it, there was a Star Trek version as well. I remember with mm -hmm. um, I think the guy who played um, Gowron, one of the Klingons, and he's playing. 
he's got very, very similar. Uh, Garon's like a really serious, significant character in the, in the whole thing. He's got very, very similar makeup to him on. So actually, you're watching him and you go, "Aren't you like leader of the Klingon High Council?" Yeah. And he's like this like Klingon piratey kind of guy. <laughs> you know, you know, he was the only guy that the video producers could get who would who would do it for the and money. He, and he brought his own costume. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's thinking, you look really familiar. You must get that all How the time. How Klingon are you? Fit little trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, it was. Um, but no, all those. I think same with role play games. I think um, music, sound. I mean, I used to love Cthulhu, which obviously mentions the madness works out well. We used to play um, Call of Cthulhu, yeah, a brilliant game. But we used to play it with the lights off, and we'd actually just have some candles lit in the room as we're playing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you want to get like quite, and you know what? It's just people telling stories and things in a room, but it's. Yeah, the chills and the you start to really get into it. Brilliant. Uh, really, really I, good. I have to I have to chuckle actually because back in Northern Ireland in the 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 early late eighties, early nineties, if we had been caught at that, there would have been an exorcism took place in the house <laughs> because there was a whole spate of youngsters all playing the Ouija. Oh yeah. See, we enjoyed board games, but they enjoyed a completely other kind of board game, you know. And we were all. Of course, you know, we wouldn't go near it. I was just was terrified of it, you know, because I, I believed in all them spooks, specters, and ghosts, so I wouldn't go near it. But I can imagine, I can yeah. imagine a parent or somebody walking in while there's a game of Mansions of Madness and just completely misunderstanding, mm. just completely misunderstanding it. Well, particularly if you're all in robes chanting and you've got like chalices of, ah, yeah, you could get glasses, but rather than with blood, you could have them, obviously, with, like... Port. Port, <laughs> yeah. Or, okay, I, I don't know if you want to really do that. Not Toma as a youngster, Tomato juice. Tomato, tomato juice, juice yeah. yeah. A bit of Tabasco in there to make it mm. a bit fiery. Oh, yeah. But boy, have times changed. Because I remember as a, I remember as a teenager, um, when I was 11 or 12, I got introduced to Iron Maiden. Uh, Excellent. I just thought, oh, my God. This is what I have spent my entire life waiting for. This is just fabulous. And I, I think uh, I went to my first concert when I was 12. I got drunk. And it was, Wait, what? it was great. It was great. An Iron Maiden gig. But they had an album called Number of the Beast that my dad wouldn't let into the house. <laughs> so I ended up buying this and doing the walk of shame the entire way home and then sneaking it into the house. And I kept it in my bottom drawer underneath all my socks and stuff like that there. Because if he ever found it, that wouldn't freak him out even leg. more, finding your, your hidden your hidden album it's to the beast. It's so ridiculous now, because looking back, now I realise that it wasn't so much him not wanting it in the house, it was my belief that he didn't want it in the house. So I, I'd, I'd actually just frightened myself. And I had this album, and I never got to play it. <laughs> CDs came out before I ever got to play that album. Why didn't you get to play it? Because I was always terrified of taking that out in case I got caught with it. And it was, it was, it, I'd built it up in my own mind. Did, did, did your dad know all of Iron Maiden's catalogue so he'd know which album that particular track was from? Well, the fact that it had, well, yeah, it's six, <laughs> six, six, the number of the beast. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so that, might have got it. that particular one, okay. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, no. You just have to do a lot of coughing. Yeah? Go, yeah. Six, six. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, a, a year before that, I was listening to George Michael singing, I want your sex. So, uh, you know, as a dad, I think I would have bought Number of the Beast. Said, Here's some, listen to that. <laughs> so, yes. Um, it... I, the thing about board gaming is it's it is an opportunity for you and your friends to get together and and make an entire evening of it you know so theme the entire evening around the game so that's what we were doing with feast of games and it's something that we will be exploring a lot lot more over the next while because i'm a fan of food anybody that looks at me will very quickly realize that you know i enjoy me too i enjoy eating but i enjoy eating no a variety of things you know i like trying different things so i'm i'm looking I would look to theme things mm. around that, the drink, the food, the lighting. Um, at home I have kind of coloured LED lighting that I can flick and switch and change the colour of during, during the night. It's, it's, it's a cool. bit like, um, it's interesting, it's like um, cinemas and things like that. And we, we're kind of going off track, but we're not. Cinemas, so really, if you think about the kind of food you eat, and this goes back to this whole talk of hot okay. dogs and what we started with at the beginning. Mm. Really, most of the food you have is pretty inoffensive because it's almost like you want something to just keep your mouth 
busy and the, and it's filling and it's warm and it's there's a bit of a taste to it, but you're not really after like a, a whole complicated gourmand kind of meal because that's not it's 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 that isn't the star. The star isn't the food. The, it's just there to kind of like quietly compliment in the background. To compliment the game. It's like your music. You're not going to have the music cranked up to full so you can't hear each other speak or whatever. It's just, it's a background kind of thing to just kind of set the scene. It's yeah. kind of one thing Carlos said to me when he was across. The English, you don't eat, you refuel. His exact words. Well, an interesting Bloody thing Spaniard. on that is your know, food doesn't need to be complicated. You know, for example, when I think Mansions of Madness, uh, for the time period, I can't help but think kind of like, Nero Wolf and stuff like that there, okay? I'm a huge fan of Nero Wolf. I, I could, if I got a weekend off, I would be sitting in front of the TV just watching the Nero Wolf series with some fine beers mm -hmm. and even just cucumber Belgian, sandwiches. Belgian beers, yes. maybe? Belgian beers. Yeah. Cucumber sandwiches with a little, little sprinkling of salt and maybe a crackle of pepper. Oh, I tell you what's nice, and obviously this is all disgusting because it's vegetables and No, things, no it's but not disgusting. You enjoy it, I don't. Yeah. Um, if cucumber sandwiches, mm -hmm. mint, a very tiny, tiny little bit of mint in there, mm -hmm. absolutely stunning. Cucumber yeah. and mint is delicious. So, anyway, I think you can see where we're going with this. <laughs> that, some, some music of the period, you know, dim the lights. The, the beauty of board games is most board games will play well when the lights are dimmed. Because mm -hmm. when you dim out all the rigmarole and stuff in your room and you have uh, good lighting on your table. So you okay, just focus in on it. It all starts to pull everything together and it all starts to, to focus the thing. In. And it, it raises the intensity it, yep. uh, of, of the game itself. So. Well, you're not looking at, you haven't got the TV on in the background or you haven't got no. people coming. It's just, it's really, I mean, it's no different to things like poker and things like that that you see where they're just, it's, it's all about the game yeah. and everything else is just kind of, kind of background. Yeah, white noise to the background. Yeah, absolutely. So let's play a game quickly, okay? okay. Well, mention a game and mention the food, okay? Okay. Ooh, okay. Um, so, um, Mansion of Madness. Uh, would go for, um, would be something like a coronation, coronation chicken sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, in, in, in squares. Mm -hmm. And um, probably an elderflower cordial or something to go with it. Just something a little bit, a little bit sophisticated. With a little, a little bit, bit of a fragrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Zombies, I'm going to do this one. It's got to be a rack of ribs. <coughs> yep. It's got to be a rack of ribs and uh, Jack Daniels and Coke. Oh. I think JD and Coke's, ice cold Cokes yep. and racks of ribs would, would work perfectly with zombies. Because the whole act of chewing on a rib during a game of zombies, obviously, Can't hand play wipes. It. <laughs> hand wipes. <laughs> well, wet well wipes. Already, Since so. having kids, I think wet wipes. Wet wipes. How did I live, how did I live without, without them? them. Yeah. And you're not allowed to put them down the toilet. <laughs> I think for myself, Spartacus would be quite simply pizza, a little bit of red wine. Pizza and red wine. That could work. That yeah. could work. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are a whole range of flatbreads and things like that, Justin, that you could have in a kind of like a, you know, like a dipping oh, sauce. Or tapas like of some yeah, kind. Yeah. I, mean, I know it's Spanish, but the but that idea Any of having meats, and aubergines, and roasted aubergines, and things like no, that. No, you made me try that. I don't like that. I haven't made you try roasted yes, you aubergines. Have. All right. Yes, you have. Myself and Justin have a complicated relationship. We love each other dearly. Justin is... Uh, Justin's... Uh, I infuriate his culinary sensibilities. No, but it's not that. It's, it's Justin... Justin sees the world in his own kind of way. And sometimes... I, I know what I like. I stick to yeah, it. Yeah, and sometimes I, I, I get, I get frustrated by the fact that, you know, Justin, look, look, there's so much more. So uh, I do have this kind of a pact with Justin. Yeah, every time we go out for a meal, he, he makes me try something new. And he will try it. He will uh, try yeah, it. Yeah, you have to good badger for me for about an hour no, first. No, no, good, good, good for you. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, well, well, I, know, I know how difficult that is because, you know, there was, uh, whenever I fir ate, first ate the beak of, uh, of an octopus or a couple of fish. Um, mm. that was, was that not by accident? No, it wasn't by accident. I ate it on purpose, Justin. Okay. I didn't realize you weren't supposed to eat it, so but I ate it on purpose, you know, and I crunched into it and all the all the gel, do you know the black ink oh. kind of squirted into my mouth and stuff like that there. But it's um I've ate that, I've ate brains, I've ate all kinds of stuff. Mm. But I have one for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to halloumi. Because I think halloumi Hell? No. You don't Ooh. even know what halloumi is. Halloumi. Yeah. Halloumi cheese. Yeah. Oh it's glorious. gorgeous. 
and it if tastes, you were like, having it tastes a game like meat. Of, it tastes like bacon, I know, but I don't like salty it. Salty meat. I have it tried like, it. Oh, it's gone. Right, I have well, tried it. I do not like it. I, find something else. Oh, I will find a way. I will find a way. Um, right, I, in fact, guys, we're going to have a competition in this episode, right? Yes. Right, so what is it we're giving away in this one? Is it this or this? We're giving away War Machine. Right, so guys, we have the War Machine Mercenary Starter Pack from Magnus the Traitor. Which Justin it, says is as rare as hen's teeth and that all you guys will want it. Honestly, I thought it was something cool that people would yeah, want. Yeah, I think so. But for people to enter this time, what they have to do is post below what you're going to get me to try to eat. How's that for you? Post below. And I will eat it on yeah, Post camera. below your ideas of interesting foods... Recipes, links to recipes. Let's let's make this the food episode. That's not what was in the plan, but let's make this the food episode. Write it all down in the comments below, and the winner is going to get himself a War Machine Mercenary Star Set that you don't get anymore. And whatever the We've food, been holding this whatever one. the food is, you'll I have try. To try it on a weekender. If it, and it's random, you are joking. And it's me. Uh, random, try randomly selected. You will eat it. I will eat right. it on the weekend. You'll swallow it. Right. Randomly selected though, yeah. Randomly selected. In that case, then, completely randomly small selected. caveat. It can't be poisonous. It has to be food. <laughs> it does not require incredible amounts of cooking skill. Yep. No, no, we don't worry about that. <laughs> we'll find a cook. Yeah. Um, Are you just yeah. going to bring in a guest chef, you know, Jamie Oliver, just to cook for this one episode? Jamie's in this area. We could ask Jamie to come in. And okay, just... now that would be funny as Should hell. Should we also say, though, to make it fair, obviously Warren has to eat it as well, though. Oh, it, that, my pleasure. It, he won't have a problem with that. My no, but pleasure. That's, but that's, no, fine. that's, just, that's fine. Just in case it's something like uh, ghost chilies or something like that that you end up being. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Not, that, nothing that's, that's going to damage still, my health. Something that's going to burn my insides. Yeah. Well, no, I, have I, I have seen reaction videos to that when it's eaten raw. Not good. Yeah. No. So it it can't be things like epic cack and stuff like that there. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an episode that would make! Well, no, the first five minutes of it would be awesome. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would get a bit messy. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh! Oh! So anyway, guys, as I said, it, it is a short one. I'm going to take Justin down to get him a long one Aye. with some with some hot steamy cheese in it. Look, thanks for watching. We'll be back next weekend for uh, a, probably an extended weekend to make up for this one. Yeah. If you're a member of Backstage, uh, we're going to be giving away this bad boy, the Assault on Normandy set. Um, again, apparently like hen's teeth at the moment. Um, so, And if you're not a member of Backstage, why not? Come on over, support Beasts of War, support everything. Because remember, what the Backstage members are doing is well they're helping pay for all this other free content as well so if you think a backstage could be something you could help and get involved in we'd very much appreciate that so next week is gen con that's gonna be fun so hopefully we'll have some bits and pieces about gen con and in xlbs i've got some cool stuff to talk about regarding drop zone commander and dust tactics so gents ladies thanks for watching we'll see you soon Thank <laughs> you.